endless wild. So I mean, if you wanted to phrase it into a question, but sure, um, sure. Uh, I'll like go through that whole whole <laughs> how the, how the heck did that happen? Um, yeah. So me on the on the receiving end of some of this information and, and visuals, maybe like, let's see. I think it was like 2018. I started kind of paying attention to this one again. I was like, what is she up to? What? Like, what the hell's going on over here? And I'm starting to see, okay, production, executive producer. Okay, maybe we're still in California. I'm trying to piece it together because I'm just nosy as fuck. So I was like, all right, she's definitely, you know, something's cooking here. So I started to notice a couple of posts with this public figure, also known as Boston George, if I'm not mistaken and um, a couple photos with Johnny Depp. And now that I have that other backstory about right. the photos from The Bachelor pad, I guess my segue to this is, what came first? Was it Johnny? Was it George? Was it Johnny's friend in the penthouse who connected the, the three, the four, the five? None of them, like none of them <laughs> connected. It was, I was, shooting for Snoop. We were covering a Canvas conference mm -hmm. in, I don't know. I guess we were in LA. I'm not really sure. It right. was like a lot of different things were happening then. Um, mm -hmm. So we were filming and uh, uh, a gentleman that I knew at the time said, do you want to meet George Young, uh, who the movie Below is based on. So I was like, yeah, definitely. That's super freaking cool. Yeah. I didn't even know that he was out of prison, right? Like right. a lot of people still ask him to stay. Oh, is he out of prison? Oh, is he still alive? It's like all those things. Yes. Right. Um, and so me and George, I got taken over the booth and I said, hey, George, what's up? My name's Georgette. I'm the female version of you because of George Georgette. Oh, that <laughs> gets, was your opener? Yeah. Hey, That's, George. I mean, uh, you have to if this is your name. <laughs> yeah, I said, I'm the female version of you. <laughs> and um, and um, so I said, I'm the female version of you. He said, I like how the female version of me looks a lot better. Oh, well, and, um, I hope so. And I said, yeah, I'm holding it down for the two of us. So. We just kind of had a laugh a ha, 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 and, and walked away. Yeah. yeah. And um, I got a phone call from that same guy maybe like a week or so later and said, you know, George really liked you. He wanted to know what you do for a living. I told him that you're Snoop Dogg's uh, producer and whatever. Right. Um, but he is interested in... <laughs> so uh, the, that same gentleman called me and said... Uh, you know, George really liked you. We wanted to know what you did, and I let him know that you were Snoop's producer, and mm -hmm. he was wondering if you knew anybody who would want to produce his documentary. And for whatever reason, it's like I didn't have control over my mouth, oh, okay. and I that said, is. "I do." <laughs> I said, "I do," and um, yeah, I thought about it for maybe a blink of a second. Yeah. After that, like, do I really? And then I was like, "Yeah, I do. I do for sure." Um, you know, I had like really worked really hard uh, at Mary Jane, and but again, I mean, you know, full disclosure, I was kind of done with feeling like, like I was doing as much as I possibly could and kind of taking a back seat. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know how important this is to say because it is what it is, and it's part of the industry. And and I paid I paid my dues, and everyone that I worked with at Mary Jane knows how much I love them. But um, it was a it was a boys club. You know, mm -hmm. and it was a boys club and I was doing everything and and uh, still not feeling as comfortable as I should have. And, you know, everyone was getting raises around me and getting, Were you, you feeling know, that wasn't an equal consideration for you. Definitely not. No. De yeah, definitely not. Unfortunately, it was like, um, you know, I realized that people had gotten stock options and all this other stuff oh. offered to them within their contracts that I did not get, uh, I guess, because they were thinking like, you know, she should feel lucky. And, um, and I did, and I did feel lucky, you know what right. I mean? But after, uh, after pulling my weight, you know, yeah. like, I was like, wait, why am I not getting any of these same offers? Why am I not getting these things? So it was definitely my time to go and I didn't want to leave with a bad taste in my mouth. But I wanted, you know, I really loved and respected everyone that I worked with and my bosses and, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I love Snoop. Snoop. I will say this, Snoop always made me feel equal. Snoop always made me feel good. He always made me feel strong. Um, but he didn't take care of the, he didn't do the business. That's not his You know what I mean? Yeah, you know? he, he, he was the art, it was again, he was the artist. The and yeah. and um, it was it was his name and his face and, and then everyone else kind of, you know, the trickle down effect. Mm -hmm. And, um, but uh, so yeah, it was like, yeah, I do. 
Right. And George, I met up with him like the next week. Yeah. You know, it was like I was on the phone, and unfortunately, a lot of people were handling his business were so like just snakes in the grass. You know what I mean? It was like they knew that he was vulnerable. He had just gone out of a 25 year prison sentence. Um, and they were just using him as a show pony, like show pony, show oh pony, show gosh. pony, show pony. They didn't care if he lived or died. Um, who was in charge of his operation or you don't have to name names, but like, it was this that guy. was not a, a good no. figure for him. No, it was leader. Hor- I should say. It was horrifying. And yeah. watch the documentary. You'll see, you'll see who was at, who was really governing the whole process. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, let's just say this when people ask what his relationship like with is like with his daughter. It's, it was not good. It was not good. And we stepped in right at the right time. And I'm so grateful because George lived his life, um, and is still living and is still out of prison and is still doing everything strongly, um, and the best he possibly can under the circumstances. Right. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was awesome. It was like, um, someone else, another studio was competing. I'm sure for his life rights. Life and, rights. Yeah, That's for his life we rights. To say, just yeah. for me saying that out loud. Yeah, someone else was competing for his life rights, and um, and they were going to offer him, you know, a flat fee. They mm-hmm. said, "This is what we're going to offer you. Da da da. This is going to be it." And um, I called him. I said, "That's bullshit. It's bullshit. It's a bullshit offer. I will take care of you. Like I will be there for you. I will. I will. Won't. You know. I won't leave your side. We're going to become more than more than um, business partners. We're going to become friends and." And I have your best interest in mind, and I really meant it. Mm. Little did I know what that was going to entail, right. but I did mean it, and I stood by it. Uh, and How do you make that type of gamble on someone that you just met? Instinct. It's all instinct. It's exactly what I was just saying before with, you know, um, wanting to be a photographer and not owning a camera. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, just, you just do it. <laughs> you just do it. Mm. And um, you just do it, and you go for it, and you can feel it in your body, and you can feel it in your in your soul, and and that's pretty much what that was. Like I really had a soul connection with this guy for whatever reason. I mean, he reminds me a lot of my dad, and okay. a lot of like the men that I I, I was raised around, and it's kind of like you know Probably this like out- the same age range. I don't know, maybe yeah, maybe a little not, like older. But, like, older. There's familiarity there. Yeah, he's just like he's. He's an outlaw with like good intentions. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. it's not like he's a he was never a criminal. Like it was like totally. If you watch a Clint Eastwood movie, yeah, you know it's like um, yeah, he's gonna like take some people out in the process, but it's like uh, you're doing it because it's it's your. That takes me like Gran Torino. That's yeah, where I'm getting a flash to. But it, it's like it's in here to just be like run, 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 yeah. you know, and just run and like this is what made sense and this is what made him money and that was it. Like, he just like that's how he made money. If anything, I've gravitated to the fact that. Um, actually a huge conversation in, in our industry right now is just like women just doing it all like you know yeah. what I mean it's like having babies and continuing on with their lives because a lot of people don't think that they can do both and you 1000% right. can you know maybe not throughout the first six months of their life I mean yeah everyone needs time to adjust yes but yeah, yeah totally I feel it like I think you should have your kid on set I think you, your kid should go with you everywhere if everyone brings their oh I can't wait their I can't child wait. Yeah. and their emotional support yeah. Or their dog. What the hell am I talking I can't, about? They no. bring their dog or their this. Like, sure, everyone is crazy animals. She is my emotional support. This is, like, the <laughs> next sure. best thing yeah. times a million. Yeah. Like, why wouldn't I want a little piece of me wherever I go? Definitely. And I want her to have that social experience. Like, that social experience. And yeah. Totally be like, that's what I my mom that does. And I have an understanding of, like, being quiet on set. I mean, we were raised hmm. either at a court ha- inside the courthouse with my mom as a judge or right. my dad at the restaurant. It was, like, adults all the time. And right. I think that's what made us be able to be really really good at business and, yeah you know. I definitely think that yeah that's cool yeah I forgot about the checks thing yeah so that's still rocking or it's oh, been still rocking. oh okay yeah, it's still rocking or that's that's a true legacy yeah 32 for years. treasure coast that mm-hmm. is like a that's a thing I'm impressed um, I've lost my parents I don't know yeah like so so are your parents together they they live here together or they're separate separate Oh, I separate. Okay. Yeah. I just didn't know the dynamics. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're set. Yeah, they they separated. It was, you, you know, the funny thing is, you know, my mom was chief judge of four counties, and my dad was like the uh, having the cops under his thumb guy. Uh, so the the lives were, were linear um, until they started to go like this. Away. Um, yeah. 
but that's how life goes. I see. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, that's how life goes. I can include and not include whatever. You can include so, it. It's, I'm blue. Yeah, it's all, if it's anything's, all, it's if all anything's part of, off the table, you yeah, just no, use it's all part of the story. No. Strong <laughs> women and strong men. I love men. Yeah. Include that. I love men. I love them all, and that's why I was. I have always respected my my place in in my industry, and right, and um, you know, understanding how to work that and use like the element of you know, not like the sex appeal, but the, the, but the element of bit. like you know, now like, listen, but like being soft and and like, hey, listen, there's not a bunch of testosterone in this room right now. Mm-hmm. Like, let's all settle our thoughts and Focus. move forward slowly yeah. and, and efficiently, and and do it like that. And I think that. Um, when you meet men, <laughs> not only at, at, in a relationship or right. in your career, that sit there and really listen to a woman, mm. they were raised, they, they love their mothers, they were raised yeah. right, and they understand that we are the ones who make the world go around. Yeah. We are the ones who bear children, right? God put, God put us on this earth to, they to, did. to, to govern the earth ongoing existence of humanity we persuade we sh- everything you probably should listen to to there's men there's certain men that you that you that do not make executive decisions there's certain women that are not good at making ex- executive decisions but when you are put in the same room in business mm-hmm. don't feel don't feel less because of that or don't feel you know um threatened because of that mm-hmm. feel empowered amen sister yeah. Let's keep this coming. I'm yes. with this Let's, all day long. No, feel all empowered. Empowered by that. You know, I will say this. Shout out to my co-producer, Chris Chesson. He feels empowered. Thank you, Chris. Being around being around strong women. I bet he does. And that and that you do not get often. I've right. I've never had an issue. I've never I've never felt like uh, you know, I, I ever had to say anything off off the beaten path of like what my thought process was in, Right, in you don't have to filter family. yourself. No, that's no. an amazing feeling. That's very free. Yeah, always find find you a partner that that does that. Yeah, find you a partner that does that. Definitely. So, back to the George sure scenario. Um, met George. Yes, I want to do your project. Yes, I want to do your documentary. Mm-hmm. And it was like hitting the ground, which is running. Um, I and bet. but we had our first week of filming set up. It was December fifth, two thousand sixteen, and George had signed his life rights over me. I will say this. Just to jump back, he wow. goes, uh, I had that conversation with him. They're making you a bad deal. They're going to offer you $20,000. That's nothing. That's that pennies. Nothing. Just because you're poor, just because you're broke right now, don't listen don't to, don't listen to that number. Yeah. Like, um, and he said, if you fly up tomorrow, I'll sign my life rights over to you. And I booked a flight. It was the first time I had called out sick in two years. And I flew up and So he, to where? To Boston? Sacramento. He was oh, in Sacramento oh. time. He had gotten okay. released. I'm thinking Boston, yeah. George. I'm like, all right, George maybe Young got, England. George Young got released out of prison um, in got Northern it. California and was living in Sacramento. Perfect. And he said, if you fly out tomorrow, I'll sign my life rights over to you. And I booked a flight and I flew up. Mm. Um, I had called Chris, my co-producer, who I had worked with prior um, with a whole bunch of other things with Snoop. Right. And, you know, it was like a, a pretty simple conversation. Do you know who George Young is? And he said, yes. Mm-hmm. I said, blah 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 this is what we're doing are you in and he said yes and it was like oh not even a, a question so another good example of just going with your gut i mean he had a very a very um uh well to do you know media company that that was very successful and this is and it was like yeah okay it was just like a like wow. time to take chances and and he did and and we did and it was awesome um but uh yeah so i flew up and Got the life right signed over, but this is when the Boston George experience happened. Is uh, we're flying up in two days, and his domestic partner Rhonda calls me crying hysterically. They just drug him out of the apartment. Uh, eight cops just showed up. He didn't even have his pants on. After and like, release, and ripped him out of the apartment and took him to jail. So my mind's like, like spinning at this point. Yeah, yeah, my oh, mind's spinning grounds. at this point. Because he, he told his probation officer at the time, uh, you know, go fuck yourself. Like, he was just like, go fuck yourself. Because she, because she called him, was just like, why are you drinking so much? Whatever. And he was like, go fuck yourself. True Boston. True. 
I love Boston. I love Bostonians. I love Bostonians yeah. so much, but they yeah. are like, fuck you. Alcoholics. Fuck you. <laughs> I know. No, not alcoholics. But if you interrupt their drinking while they're watching baseball uh, or football, I'm oh, sorry, okay. he was watching yeah, that's football. That's a major problem. Yeah, if you interrupt the drinking during football season, yes, fuck you. Like, that <laughs> is what's happening. It was a major F you, and she did not like it, and sure as shit, she sent the freaking cops over there. I and bet. They drug him out of his apartment. So our first interviews went from like a simple setup discovery interview in his apartment to through glass at the Sacramento jail. Oh. My first three, my first three <laughs> interviews with, with George were through glass, um, which is just like the weirdest roller coaster. But ride I, I will ever say this: it was like us, like fist to fist through glass, and he was just like, "This looks good, doesn't it? Like <laughs> this looks good. This looks good for the documentary. Didn't get the shot. It? Yeah, <laughs> this looks good for the documentary." I said, "Yes, but you know," and I'm like sitting there really like like feeling for him you know I'm like yeah but it's at your expense and I don't want you to think that I want this you know like I'd much rather you be home and um because I didn't see that I was gonna die in jail I was like wow I quit my job with Snoop um to like have this this poor old man that was that should be free right now yeah back in back in a cold prison cell in in the in the middle of winter you know what I mean because they weren't like it was just it was just crazy so that's just (laughs) it's crazy why would it you do crazy. that? I just like don't even understand. So, so just because of the, you know, F you shut it down with Proby. Yeah. Well, that, he had violated. It. He violated probation. Something. Yeah, yeah, he violated probation, um, and she like wasn't even gonna call him on it, but mm. because of the the fuck you, he she was just like, uh, oh, P.S. Uh, I know that you went down to San Diego without me knowing. Right. Um, no, yeah. And and yeah, so that really came back to bite him in the ass because he didn't get out until July. He didn't Damn. get out until July 3rd. So he, he went in, like, December. Damn. Yeah, so the first six months of the Boston George documentary experience was all all through jail. and Okay. It was just really, really, really wild times. Um, really wild times. But that, that, I mean, sets the stage, right? It sets yeah. the stage to what you're signing up for for a, um, a 75-year-old outlaw. I mean, it's literally like... The good, the bad, the ugly. Right. Let's freaking go. I mean, yeah. it's like, it comes with the territory. You can't sit there and say, I mean, there's multiple times, like, you know, he got released. <laughs> he got released, and thank God for his new probation officer, who is such a saint and dealt with so much crap. Finally. Um, but he was not allowed to drink. Mm. It was one of those things where it was like the new stipulations to his probation. As um, I sip my wine. Just listen. <laughs> Cheers to George Young. <laughs> George. Cheers to George Young. For you. uh, Georgie, we love you so much. Um, but the new stipulations determined that he was not able to drink uh, until he was mm-hmm. off probation, which, of course, we never thought was going to happen, but he is off probation now. Um, okay. And But it saved the production. Because it probably saved his life. It saved the, his the life. The timing. It saved his life. Of course, most importantly, it saved his life. But, but let's be real. It could save us now. You guys are going to drag him off to jail now. The dude was drinking the entire time, but he. I was let, gonna say, how was that but measured he drank or monitored? Because of <laughs> because of Mama Mama Angelos over here, Mama Jet. Yeah, Mama Jet was holding it down. I mean, it was like fighting with my child twenty four seven. I was like George, um, you know, just A through Z. I mean, it was just it was all over the place. I mean, we had situations. I mean, we were filming in New York, and mm-hmm. and Ron had called me that you know, someone had they had gotten in a fight, and so stabbed so is this like, like his like life partner Rhonda, or they, at the time they met it's a really good question they they met um because she had watched the movie blow and wrote to him for 14 years are you kidding me? thousands of letters we we have it documented in, in the documentary uh stay tuned boston george famous without the fortune docuseries um, very excited but yeah it was it was wild because she was, um, she like sought refuge in George, which is like an oxymoron for for the for how weak of how weak he was when he got out. I mean, listen, twenty five years in prison, you have a hundred million dollars, and then you lose everything. Um, wow. You know, he got he got screwed over by his daughter. He got screwed over by the government. He got screwed that, over uh, by Christina. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, he got screwed over time and time again. I'm, uh, yeah, Don't get me wrong. He put himself completely in those situations. Right, right, um, right. By no means am I sitting here, uh, you know, promoting George's sainthood. Um, of course. But, but 
it's like this weird phenomenon of he has this like like you know that you're sitting there looking at like you watch cocaine cowboys right Mm -hmm. these guys are like yeah we fucking shot whoever we did whatever we're sitting there smoking cigs and 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 throwing them back and it's like you know there's no sophistication to it whatsoever these Mm -hmm. are just like hired criminals yeah where george was a is a poet and an existentialist. I was just gonna and, say, so eloquent. Yeah, he's he's a poet. He's an existentialist. He's he's a total vibe, right? Like, let's let's speak how we how we all know and, and feel it. George Young is a vibe, and 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 it's a vibe that can, that can't be matched, and it's unprecedented, and and it's just the whole thing. Like, there's just no there's no one like him. There's only right. one Boston George. There's only one George Young, and 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 that's what it was, and that was the whole experience. I mean, it was like start to finish. Um, start to finish, it was a vibe. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You've been so, I, I guess, blessed is the only thing that comes to mind to have been connected to all these poignant people. Um, a celebrity outlaw. You know? Wild. I never thought that that you going to Cali would result in Snoop, all the big greats, Yeah. just living it up, and then we're going to send off, return to Florida, basically, right? circle back and we've got a celebrity outlaw on our hands. Not only is this whole thing been depicted with the greatest amount of attention, detail, and everything else as far as visuals go, I'm sure it's going to look amazing, um, but you know, she's really been able to capture him in his true essence, just hearing her so you know, easily deliver all of this about his story, her story, how they have combined. I'm just, I'm completely blown away. Thank actually. you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much. It was, it was awesome. And it was awesome. I mean, we got, it was like, uh, I threw George's birthday party at the Chinese theater. Right. And, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and that's kind of was like, we thought that that was going to be our last shot. You know, that was our martini mm-hmm. and it was George's 76th birthday. Uh, we walked the white carpet instead right. of the red carpet. We walked the white carpet. The white line? Is that yeah. the, uh, well, it was, I, at the original blow premiere in 2001 okay. uh, with Ted Demi and Johnny Depp and everybody, they had a white carpet instead of a red carpet, obviously. I mean, that's up to your interpretation. Waka waka. <laughs> um, and, and we emulated that yeah. uh, that night because George was in prison. He, he, yes. was, he wasn't able to experience that night, and I brought it back to life for him to the best of my ability. Of course, Ted Demi has since, has since passed. Um, he, he, oh. he, he died uh, within a year of blow being really? released. Yeah. He had a heart attack at, at a celebrity basketball game at UCLA. And, oh my and goodness. Died. And, um, yeah, just like me chills even saying that, but, uh, yeah. his, his kids were there and, and his, um, uh, his wife helped me a lot. Uh, you know, she was like very, very, uh, open communication. Amanda mm-hmm. didn't come, but, um, mm-hmm. you know, she was like very heartfelt and her heart went out to George and, and she was happy that we were doing that night. And obviously for her to have the kids come, it was, it was awesome. But, um, you know, you're sitting there waiting for, like, is Johnny Depp going to show up? Is Johnny Depp going to show up? I mean, that's my burning question of desire and childhood crush and everything. Yes. I mean, uh, you you and everybody else, girlfriend, let's be real. You watch, uh, I mean, it, I, <laughs> I, I never, I would just kind of be like, be like, just like, yeah, <laughs> totally. I don't know. <laughs> it was, well, you know, it's like I had had that whole history, right? Of right. State, of living in, living in that that um that penthouse and right and kind of like living vicariously through and it was yet again one of those times where i was like maybe i'll be able to give uh you know this information to him like maybe i'll meet him one day and tell him my story mm. and then i moved out of the apartment and it was like never never a chance never a chance is that ever gonna happen never a chance in hell nah Am I going to be put in the scenario to meet Johnny Depp? No way, no how. And um, and thing. that was yeah. ultimately not true. <laughs> Yet again, I was wrong. Yet again, I was right, but I was wrong. Um, so it was I'd awesome. Take that, right? Yeah, I was very, very incorrect. Uh, so we threw that party, and you know, it was like a so sorry, Johnny can't make it. He's in Europe, right? Uh-huh. Okay. All right, cool. So my my. Dreams are crushed. Dreams are crushed. Oh, I'm not no, going to no, be able no. to tell him this. No, just joking. You can't my invite that are... in with all those things just like Yeah, it happening. was like, uh, yeah, like, uh, all right, well, you know, George is going to be bummed. I mean, I, I was really doing it for George, um, you know, because No, he I just... see that wholeheartedly yeah. coming through. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally, totally, yeah. totally. Um, that goes without saying. goes without <laughs> saying. I, I did everything. I did even the production 
was is is at this point for George. I'm praying to God it would sell it before um, before he dies because I, I want him to see the fruits of his labor. I think I he do. deserves yeah. to uh, to have that. He deserves it. Um, he needs his moment. I know. Does. I know the TCL was a big a big token, a big yeah. you know reciprocation, if you will, or something. Yes, but, but see, but, like there is something good that it goes to show you that even though he did, of course, everyone's like. You, he brought 90% of the cocaine in the United States. He was Pablo's vehicle, right? Yeah. To, he was Pablo Escobar's vehicle. Pablo was, was, of course, like, making moves all around Colombia then. Mm-hmm. But it was like, how do we combine these, combine the borders, you know? How do right. we combine the worlds um, to make this as lucrative as, as possible? And George Young was, was that vehicle. Yeah, it just goes to show you, you know, it was like, Obviously, George had some good things coming to him because, you know, and this isn't a pat on my back at all. It's not like I was, like, the good thing. But he deserves someone to take care of him and to, like, really sincerely need nothing from him. And, um, you know, we had a lot of options as a way to tell the story. And it, it could have been, you know, completely, completely being like, he's broke. He's fucking a drunk. He's this. He's a... It was none of those things. Mm. We wanted to hear true blue, who this man was... Um, and who he is and how it's, how he's like that last living outlaw, you know, um, which he, which he really is. And, uh, I mean, he's come, he comes from a whole different world, Mm -hmm. you know, a different world that doesn't exist. It's almost like, it's almost like he's like that old soul that's like so floating around in in our bullshit that like, he shouldn't even be like, I'm I'm so grateful that he's still here, but I'm like, why are you even seeing any of this? It's like embarrassing almost, you know, where I'm like, Mm. oh my God, like, cause our world is so different from, from that, that, yeah. that he exists in. It's like the Jack Kerouac to Aristotle to mm-hmm. all these other people and, and things that he's studied for so long and that he really, uh, you know, has made George who he is. And um, so anyway, it, we had the party at the Chinese Theater. Huge right. success. Huge success. 400 people in places packed. Um, dressed in nines, black tie I event. bet you're so, like, just it was, in a... It was Revelling. wild. Yeah, it was wild. It was very, very wild. Um, I actually saw a little clip from your interview. Yes. <laughs> and you were like, yeah, we're here. Yeah, we're uh, here. It's George's 76th birthday. Well, I, I, was like, I was like, you're just so nonchalant. Like me, I don't even think I'd be able to say, my name's Chelsea Walsh and blah, blah, blah. Like, you know what I mean? It was so Incredible. surreal, but it felt so right and it felt so natural. And it was like very right. wild because me and, me and Chris were uh, on our way up to go find Christina. And, and mm-hmm. I was, and George's First birthday, time. yeah, and George's birthday's kind of coming up, and I'm on this flight to San Francisco, and I was, like, kind of half asleep. And I woke up, and I said, we should have George's birthday party at the Chinese Theater. And he looks at me like I had three heads. He was just <laughs> like, yeah, that's a really sweet idea. Uh, that's really cute of you, but there's no way that that's going to happen. And, and Why do you think the- that was impossible? He's very humble. Because, yeah, it was the humility behind it. He's like, let's just keep doing what we're doing here. You know what I mean? Right. Like, let's just keep our, our minds focused on on what's at hand. Probably not used and to I all literally, of us in our ADD brains. Oh, so. I was, like, <laughs> skipping through, like, San Francisco airport being like, I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to have the party at the Chinese Theater. That's what I'm going to do. And I made, like, three phone calls. And, um, yeah, and then we had the party at the Chinese Theater. And then and it we just had happened. The, at the Chinese Theater, and it was awesome. And, you know, all of our families were there and whatever. I know. Party of the Chinese Theater, it happened. Mm-hmm. Um, that's it. You know, that's all she wrote. So I think that that's our last shot. Right. And, uh, you know, fast forward. I meet Penelope's dad. I'm pregnant. Um, I'm like, okay, the next phase of my life is going to happen. We're going to sell the documentary. And I don't know, it was like, yet again, one of those nights that, like, something came over me. And I reached back out to Johnny Depp's assistant. Mm-hmm. Um, and I said... I guess he's like manager, um, you know, and I was like, Hey, you know, we're done. We're done filming. I don't want anything from Johnny. I don't, I don't need him to film with us. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we had the birthday party. Here's the video of it. You know, it's like, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, look, we've already succeeded. We've succeeded. Mm -hmm. We've succeeded. I just want George to see him again. Cause, cause his health sucks. And I really want George to see him again. And, um, he wrote me back. Hell yes. And he said, uh, and he said, let me know what I can do. You know, like, let me know how we can help. And, uh, (laughs) like not having the, not having the, uh, poetic sense about right now. Yeah. It's me, uh, 
Johnny. So I don't. <laughs>